Hi, this is Matt with AppliancePartsPros.com. Today we'll be showing you how to repair your appliance. Remember, anytime you work on an appliance, make sure it's unplugged or the circuit breakers are off so there's no chance of electrocution. In this video, we're going to show you how to change out the GE refrigerator solenoid assembly. It's going to be a very easy repair and should only take a few minutes to show you how to do it. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can click on the link below or get it at AppliancePartsPros.com. When you open up the package, you're going to get the new solenoid plunger and the solenoid assembly. The solenoid assembly is located in the dispenser area and it's what opens the door so the ice cubes can come out. The main reason you'll be changing it out is if the solenoid has failed and the door isn't opening. In order to get to the part, we have to take off the faceplate for the dispenser. There's a little tab on each end that we're going to stick a putty knife up into one of them and just twist the putty knife to release the locking tabs. Once you have them all released, you can pull it off and set it aside. With the cover out of the way, we can use our Phillips screwdriver and take out the four screws. Next we're going to remove the actuator pad assembly. It's mounted on a little square frame that has four pegs that hold it into the dispenser. So we're going to carefully lift up a corner and pull it out. And you want to make sure that the four legs come out. Now that we have the actuator pad out, we can pull the assembly out. You want to make sure that the water line comes out from the yoke underneath. And then we can pull it out so we can disconnect this wiring harness. They don't give you much slack, so we're going to have to get behind it with a small flathead screwdriver and pop it off. Get underneath the little connector block and kind of get in there and break it free. Once you have it loose, you can reach in and kind of grab the wires carefully with your hand and just pull it off. Once you have the wire harness disconnected, you can pull the top half of the dispenser out. Now that we have the top half of the dispenser out of the way, we have access to the solenoid assembly. It has two wires on it. It's a double orange on this side and a red on this side. Make sure you remember where yours go if they're different. The plugs are waterproof, so you can't really get under there with a screwdriver to help push them off. So we're going to take a needle on those pliers and carefully pull them both off. Once you have them both off, you can kind of stick the wire harness out of the way for right now. And then we're going to use our Phillips screwdriver to take the screws out. First one is up here on the top. I'm just going to reach in and take them all out. If you drop the screw up there, don't worry, we'll get it in a minute. And then we'll take the lower screws out. Now they have all the screws out, we can pull the solenoid assembly out. The arm might stick to the door, so if you have to, we can pull up on the door and unhook it from the solenoid plunger. Here's the old solenoid assembly next to the new one. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can get it at AppliancePartsPros.com. We're going to put the new solenoid assembly in the same way we took it out. We're going to open up the door and get that arm down so we can put the plunger on there and then let the door close and the plunger is just going to hang there and then we'll put the solenoid assembly onto the plunger and then we're going to lift the solenoid up and let the plunger go inside so it's in the proper position. Once you have it in place like this we're going to hold it and use our Phillips screwdriver to put in the screws at the bottom to hold it in place. Once you have the two bigger ones on, we're going to grab the smaller screw and put the grounding wire on it. And then we can put the last screw on the top. With the solenoid mounted, we can reach in and grab the wire harness and reconnect it to the solenoid. Remember it was double orange on the left and red on the right. And you want to push these on all the way so you get good connection. Now that we have the solenoid assembly mounted, we can put the dispenser back together. As you're sliding the assembly in, you want to make sure that the water hose comes out of the middle of this yoke and that 
each corner right here is up on its little shelf. Now that we have the assembly up into the door, we have to let it out a little bit and reach in and grab the wiring harness so we can connect it to the dispenser control board. It's a little tight in there, so you gotta kind of fish it around and line it up so it goes onto the pins down there. Sometimes you just have to play around with it. You can use a small pliers if you have it, but the wire harness is so short, you just gotta wait till you get it lined up and then push it down. So you have to grab it with the pliers and very carefully get it lined up with the pins. And once you have it started, you can grab a flathead screwdriver and push it down all the way. Once you have the wire harness connected, you can push this back in the rest of the way. Now that we have the dispenser assembly in place, we can use our Phillips screwdriver to put the screws back in. Once you have the screws back in place, we can put the faceplate back on. All you have to do is line the locking tabs up with the holes and push it back into place. Now that we have the faceplate back in, we can put the actuator pad in. To put the actuator pad on, all you have to do is slide it up into place and line the pins up with the pin holes and push it back into place. Now that you have the new part installed, you can plug the refrigerator back in and make sure it starts to cool. Thanks for joining us for another successful repair brought to you by appliancepartspros.com. Check out our other repair videos on our site, Facebook, and YouTube.